right, so I am I'm kind of tired of uh, looking at this mess. Um, so I figured I'll clean it up and put it where I think it's going to go. I was potentially playing with the idea of having a panel be kind of up here. Um, but as I'm looking at it, I got this kind of secret area right there. So meaning that's kind of where the passenger sits, their feet are going here, and then there's this area here which is used for nothing. So um, I'm thinking about putting them there. Um, there's kind of an access panel that I can get to from here. And so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. Um, beyond that, I'm going to start looking at the Tesla wiring and figure out, or start to figure out, how that all fits into the, everything. So I thought I did a pretty good job um, with all the wires from the car. So essentially um, all these bundles are either coming kind of from the dash, from the front. The rear wiring harness, um, it's just got one connector. So again, everything's, everything's pretty tidy and nice for the car. Um, it's just when it gets to my fuse relay box that it's a jumbled mess. So I've disconnected everything from the car and I'm just gonna work on trying to tidy this up. Okay, so I've been working on the electrical. Um, again, the electrical from the car is fairly tidy. Um, and I'm improving here, just adding more connectors so I can kind of tie everything out of the way and just have connectors and not the bundles of wires. So we'll try and clean this up and then move on to something else. So one other thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna route some wires for future considerations. So for like uh, radio, for door locks, for windows. Um, I'm also gonna do AC and heat. Um, so I'll try and go ahead and run some wires for that and kind of make them tidy as well. And then we'll have all the wiring kind of squared away for future use. This is my negative bus bar. So got them all, all the wires here, and then um, the connectors are here. I usually add some colored tape just to help me understand or uh, identify which corresponding connector um, goes there. So I've got maybe four different tape colors and so I just kind of alternate and then combine to give me lots of different options so I know which connector goes where. Also, this uh, this is rated for I think 125 amps or so. So uh, most of the 12 volt circuits will, uh, again, their negatives will terminate here, and then I'll use this main pin um, to go back the battery, probably with like a six gauge battery cable. I'm pretty sure that I am uh, doing this like the most complicated way possible. So I'm I'm trying to figure out each circuit as I go along and um, essentially just I'm sure there's a lot easier way and I'm sure somebody will tell me someday but for right now um, got most of the circuits figured out. I'm getting the passive keyless entry um, to work and so um, yeah I think that'll fill up my last my last spots here in my fuse relay box. Got two more that I need to get that system all sorted out and uh, I'll call that good. I swear it was getting better. Um, seems like it's messier now, but I've got, I had to uh, reverse the polarity of, of these two um, relays because the kind of the security system, the passive keyless entry, um, needs or it, it outputs a negative signal so don't know why they do that um, it would be a lot easier for me if it was just positive but um, we'll get things continue to be wired up and 
splice the wires to the right places and continue. Okay, so I got this uh, start-stop button um, on eBay relatively cheap. Um, it's a momentary switch and um, essentially the way this works for an internal combustion engine, it's kind of uh, giving the signal to the starter. Um, so I don't need a momentary, I need something to kind of stay on a latch. Okay, so I got a, uh, a little board here that converts a momentary switch, which is what I have, to a latching switch. Uh, so right now I've got it hooked up to this uh, LED and I'm gonna give it a go so we'll see how this works or if I got it wired wrong or blow it up. Okay, so power's on. So then it, I just push it once, latches on. Push it again. Huh, well. So it latched on, but it's not coming off. So we'll see what we have to do. I have the circuit wired up um, how I think it needs to be, but it's uh, essentially the switch is not acting like a true momentary switch. So if I click it on once, it goes there. I click it again though, it doesn't go off. Um, these that I have connect to it. So again, if I touch these two, it goes off. If I touch it, it goes on. So this is not acting like just a switch. So I'll see if I can't figure out what's going on. So um, I'm kind of disassembled. Um, so I got one of these thinking, okay, that'll do the trick. Um, however, there's enough impedance in the system because this has got lights and other things that that didn't quite work. So um, again, what I did is I then disassembled this and what I'm gonna do is I'm adding this, um, another momentary switch. I'm gonna solder some leads on and that will go to this board then and kind of give the signal to not only start but keep the car on. So um, anyway, that's kind of that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, that's kind of what's underneath. That's the original one. We're adding this little piece on top. So I got the first leg soldered. I think we're good. We'll try for the second. All right, so I got them soldered on. I don't know how great they are, but uh, I think they'll work. All right, I got it uh, wired and situated. I'm not, it's got some screws that keep it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the, the wires and the circuit before I screw everything together. Okay, so this is uh, testing out the start stop button um, with the circuit board and the new wires. So these are the old wires that add too much impedance. Um, so in theory, when I push this, um, we should get 12 volts, and then even when it's let go, it should stay 12 volts. Okay, so this is the first half I soldered all these wires on. Um, this is probably the first time I've soldered things this small, so now I'm going to attempt to solder this to the circuit board and then do the second half. So there's the first side, 
um, again for not being a good solderer um, and it's the first time kind of doing something this small I think that'll be okay I think that doesn't look too bad All right, I got uh, the other side soldered as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and test it again just to make sure we didn't uh, singe anything and make sure all the connections are good. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Um, got it wired up and this time everything's soldered. So still got things just jumpered. I just wanna see if it works. All right, so Got nothing there, so in theory, um, push that, we get 12 volts. Let me push it again. Uh, push it again. Okay, good. So it goes to zero, to 12. Okay, so the only other thing I wanted to check out is just the lights on this. Okay, so in theory, when I hit this, I think something's supposed to light up. Yeah, so there it goes. So the nut's on, and I can do this, and then it's off. So I think I like that. So I think I'll probably keep it like that. All right, I don't know what my average is, but I'm guessing it's around 50%. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and plug in the passive keyless entry system and what I'm looking to do is see if uh, it works. So we'll go ahead and see. Alright, here we are plugging it in. Alright, so it's recognizing it's here. Um, I'm going to go get a helper to Move this in and out of range and see if uh, any of the signals work. Okay, I'm gonna have my assistant Jack uh, walk out of range. One of the things I've got wired is the door lock. The other one is up there, the light. So we're gonna see. Go ahead, Jack. Let me know what it's blinking. But nothing. Come back. All right, so apparently not right yet. Okay, so ugh, it's quite painful, but I think we've got it figured out. Um, having this signal be negative just ugh, messes a lot of things up. So when I went to go um, put things in my fuse relay box, anyway, I kept having to switch things around. So I think we've got it now. So here's the lock. Um, and so what we'll, what we'll do, let's see, we'll extend it. Okay, Jack, do you want to go walk out of range? Let us know what the light's doing. Go ahead. There it goes, so he's out of range and it locked. Okay, now come back in. Back in range and unlocks, yay! All right, so I'm making my own wiring diagram. Um, I'm using the uh, incredibly powerful and useful Microsoft Excel. Um, and as you can see, I'm not doing a great job, um, but I'm just trying to figure everything out. I've got a couple questions, but um, just trying to you know get all the pin locations, wire colors, things like that, and try and figure things out. So start uh, connecting some of these plugs and see see how far we get okay so this is the charger um, essentially you plug it in um, we'll, we'll have to splice the cable and such so it will work with our, our 
car charging plug. Um, and from there, it converts the power to like 375 volts or something like that um, for the car. So that's that aspect. This is the DC to DC converter. So again, we'll get the, the high energy, or sorry, high voltage here and here, and we'll get the low voltage out here for the rest of the car. So slowly trying to figure things out. Okay, so trying to figure out wiring. Um, and so I've got the connector now, it's all put together. So this goes into here. I'm not quite certain um, about this. So I've got this cable here that uh, will connect. Uh, it, the thing is, I just got one wire stripped. The other ones are not used. So it just seems like that's probably not the right way to do things here. But I think that's, it's dependent on the BMS, which uh, the battery management system, which I don't have yet. So anyways, the outputs are here and here. And moving on, so this is the, uh, I'm taking apart the connector, um, the charging connector. So these two here are for like the 220 and this is the ground. And I've got like a proximity and pilot pin. So I need to solder on the wires to these and then uh, put the rubber gasket back on, screw this on, um, put it back to this. But essentially those wires, so two, these, these two wires go to this, these here. Um, I'll just need a ground wire. I don't know, I'll have to see where the ground wire goes on this. But yeah, just trying to slowly figure things out. All right, so I've got these uh, high amp, high voltage uh, fuse holders and uh, high voltage fuses but the problem is they don't fit so it's just not even close so uh, it's just been my luck to kind of uh, go through this process and get stuff that doesn't quite work so we'll contact the company see what we can do all right so i was hoping to get a little further so we could actually get this all tidied up but that'll have to wait until next week um, however this week we did get um, few more things done. So we got uh, the door locks are wired and uh, now they're working. So the uh, passive key keyless entry um, is also up and working. Um, I've got the start stop button ready to go. I need to wire that to the passive keyless entry and uh, got wires run for the radio speakers and windows. So next week again we'll um, get this all tidied up and um, from there, we'll probably start on the Tesla motor wiring. So that'll be exciting. All right, thank you for tuning in. Um, got a lot done. We're excited to have you here. Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, um, what we're doing is we got this kit car, uh, putting a Tesla motor, 600 horsepower motor in a about a 2,500 pound car and learning all the fun stuff along the way. So please join me through my journey. Um, please like and subscribe, thanks.